Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to another edition of Photoshop for Video. This week, we're going to continue our look at designing a lower third graphic. If you didn't watch last week's episode, you can go ahead back to iTunes or Adobe TV and be sure to download it as well. This week, we're going to finish our design taking advantage of things like Pantone colors, as well as use finessing controls to better format the text. Let's jump in. Now, last week we used a solid color of red to stylize the bar. One of the things that you may encounter if working with corporate clients is that they'll provide you with Pantone colors for very specific colors that they use for their corporation. Now, the challenge with this is that Pantone is a technology that is normally used for specific inks in the world of commercial printing. There's no way to exactly calibrate a television to a printed document but you can get relatively close and at least make the effort to try. Here's how. If you're using a solid color layer to tint things, make sure that that layer appears on top. You could do that by dragging it within the layer stack. So in this case, I'm going to put it above the rope texture, and it is a little bit stronger with its colorization. Next, you could take that solid color layer and click on it to open its controls. Now, if you don't have one in your document, remember, it's accessible from the Adjustment Layer or Fill category, and you would just choose Solid Color. When you open that up, you'll see that you have your Color Picker. And nowhere within this Color Picker do you see Pantone. To access that, simply click on the button labeled Color Libraries. When you do this, a new window opens up, and you'll see several different Pantone, as well as other types of print libraries. Go ahead and stick with the solid coded, unless there's a specific reason to switch from client instruction. And you'll see here that the numbers are all there. So you could type in the value, such as 192 for a red, or come over here to the side and click on a particular swatch to load it as well. Let's go ahead and stick up here with the reds and oranges, and we'll choose that value of 1788. When satisfied, I can click OK. And this is helpful because we've actually used the Pantone value to affect the graphic. Again, it's not going to be an exact match because Pantone colors really only work when using actual Pantone inks. But this is the closest way to come to matching those colors that a corporate or other type of client might have in their style guide. What I want to do next is actually finesse a few things here. We're going to take the text here for the description and break that back into two lines by clicking and dragging here so the text wraps. And what I want to do is nestle that right underneath the letters here. So let's go ahead with that selected and nudge that up just a little. We'll turn back on the Save Title Overlay to look at it, and what we see is that we need to move things around a bit. This is a good example because we can tighten up the space between the two lines of text. If you look at the text here, you can go ahead and click to open up the character and paragraph palette. And what we see is that the leading is currently set to 27 points. Now the leading is the overall space between all lines, so if we want to close the gap, we need to put a smaller number in. Let's go ahead and take this point size down to about 20 for the text and we'll decrease the leading to 23. And notice how the text appears closer to each other. Pull this in just a little tighter, and that'll wrap. There we go. And we can now nudge that up just a little. And at this point, it's looking pretty good, but I want to improve the readability. We can do this using layer styles. Now, we can select a layer here, such as the text, and click on the little F here for effects, and let's go ahead and click and add a drop shadow. And you see it's applied to the text. Now, this is fine, and most people use the default values, but we can go ahead and increase the size a little bit and the spread to make it a little thicker. One thing that most people don't know is you can click right inside the window here and just interactively move the shadow around. So if you wanted to go down to the right, just pull it down to the right. The key there, though, is to make sure you leave the global light property checked. See here, global light is indicated, and this means that this angle of the light that's causing the shadow will propagate to all other layer styles in the document. And that's important, because you don't want your shadow going down this way, but on another layer, have a bevel and have the light looks like it's coming from over here. So you need that consistency 
so you have an overall lighting source within the document. Let's go ahead and click OK, and we'll select our next level here, and I'm going to also add a drop shadow. We could do that by simply option dragging it down, and it'll actually apply it. And if I want to finesse this a little bit further, let's toss on a small stroke, and we'll change that stroke to be a dark color. Let's sample the tree here, and that works out pretty well. Three pixels on the outside. I could take that down to two, actually, and it still looks pretty good. The next thing you should do is tweak the kerning between all the letters. Now, if we double click on this here, you'll see all the letters. And right now, it's pretty good, but it feels like the G and the H are a little too close to each other. So if I hold down the Option or the Alt key and press the right arrow, I could increase that spacing. Go to the next letter and do the same thing. If you want to pull a letter to the left, just press the left arrow and it tightens the gap. And what we're trying to do here is just get a nice overall balance for these characters. So it still feels tight, but not too tight between each letter. There we go. And when satisfied, click the Commit button.